right, hello and welcome to another Sales Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Judy Frank of the Rain Group. How are you doing, Judy? I'm doing terrific. It's uh, a cloudy day in California, which is good. It gives us a little bit of a break. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, Judy helps uh, companies achieve greater sales uh, results and better sales performance. And one of the things that I noticed that Judy talks about, and I wanted to explore a little more today because I you know, uh, do a lot of work and have a lot of interest in sales process, but the idea of bottlenecks and accelerators within a sales process. So, um, Judy, tell me a little bit about um, the kind of bottlenecks that you often come across within sales processes when you're working with your clients. Sure, and you know, I call them also speed bumps or potholes. You know, things that just like kind of, you know, slow the, the, the momentum down. Right. Um, it's, it's very interesting. There's a key area that most companies have challenges around, and that's in the, what we call discovery, mm -hmm. discovery area, where there is a conversation going on and the salespeople just want to move right into talking about products and services and don't take the time to establish rapport, build trust, and have that compelling conversation where they're asking questions, they're gaining insights, they're finding out what, not only what the customer needs, but what they want, but what they need really is more important because it's reading between the lines, it's asking the questions to get to the real core issues. And most salespeople, tend to blow through the discovery section. And so the first thing they hear is they think, oh, that's the solution. I, that aligns with one of the solutions I have. And they just go right to the solution. And so they don't spend enough, enough time. Right. So in many ways, then, the first major you know, mistake is just forging ahead too quickly without doing the groundwork. So the really the early stage sales process work. Yes, exactly. I mean, this is where trust is established and people buy from people, people sell to people, people work with people. It's all about people. And so think about if you go on a first date, you're not going to ask them to marry you after two dates. You're going to take time to get to know them. You're going to ask a lot of questions. You're going to want to understand what motivates them, what excites them, what delights them, what upsets them, what challenges them. You are going to take time, hopefully, to learn about them. It's the same thing. This is a relationship. Whereas a lot, so, of, a lot of salespeople can sometimes treat it like speed dating, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's exactly right. And we know how successful speed dating is. <laughs> exactly. <Not. laughs> so how, can, um, how do you advise salespeople to slow down? Because it's, it's very uh, tempting to forge forward. And, you know, they have... Um, you know, they have their quotas and their monthly targets, and it always looks better when, let's face it, when the opportunity is further along in the sales process as opposed to being stuck in the early stages. But So how do you encourage them to, you know, really spend that early stage time and resist the temptation to push it forward because they're going to invest so much more time later on opportunities they can't win, right? Exactly, yes. So in that needs analysis, in that conversation, the first thing you want to do is qualify. Is this a viable opportunity? Is this a viable company that I can do business with? Is this a viable company that I can help? Because really, selling today is helping. We're helping companies to increase revenue, to decrease costs, to increase new uh, customer, increase the number of new customers or to sell more to existing customers. You're helping them to figure out a better way to operate using your products, your services, your software. So it's critical to get to the no quickly. Right. You want to get a fast no because if it's not worth your time, you want to spend your time with companies that you can help. So... Yeah, there's another there's another temptation, and that's you know the filling filling the early stages with lots and lots and lots of opportunities, right? So that 
you know, regardless of how things are going right now, you can always have that comfort of looking at your early stages and saying there's so, so much potential in there. But again, it, it takes some um, nerve or guts to really clean out your, your pipeline and only have the opportunities in there that you have a good chance of winning. That's, how do you handle that with companies? Because that's a difficult one sometimes for senior management even to look at a pipeline and think that looks really small, but the reality is it's highly qualified. Yes, yeah, so that's a very good point. Um, I actually um, have sat down with managers and their salespeople and gone through the pipeline. And so asking the questions, you know, who are you positioned with? What are the value, what's, what's the value that we're bringing to the table? Who are the key decision makers? Tell me about the personas of those key decision makers. How do they like to be sold to? Um, tell me to understand their sale, their buying process. Uh, what is their, you know, we typically we go to that, you know, typical band type of questions, but you really need to understand what's underneath. What are the elements? Who are the key people? How close are we to, um, building that relationship, how insightful are we around what their internal process is and who are the key people that we need to be positioned with and what is actually happening in that company. So to me, the most important role in any sales organization is the sales manager. It's that frontline salesman because they're the ones who are dealing with the folks on a day-to-day -day basis. Hopefully they're going out on sales calls with them and they're the ones who are asking those questions on a daily basis to really unpeel the onion to determine if, in fact, is this a, a viable opportunity where we should be investing our time. Yeah, and, and as you talk about sales managers, you know, there's a great temptation among sales managers to focus on the end of the sales process, right? The later stages and sort of help get things over the line or parachute in as super closer. Right. Um, when the reality is, as you say, they should be focused more towards the early stages of really helping to qualify opportunities and making sure their salespeople are laying the foundation, right? Exactly. Exactly. It's um, We call it leading indicators versus lagging indicators. Right. So the lagging indicators are the close ratios. It's the, um, the win rates, it, the revenue. It's, all of those things are lagging because the leading indicators are the ones that we're talking about yeah. because yeah. this is going to determine whether in fact you're going to be able to be successful and actually meet those targets and those goals. So for sales managers, in fact, I just had a conversation today with one of my clients. We've done, um, we've done training with them. We've done workshops. We're doing reinforcement, ongoing uh, support. And we were talking about how the team is doing. And so one of my questions was, talk to me about how your management team is coaching mm -hmm. people to reinforce the concepts. And it turns out, you know, that, that is an area of that's not being done as well as it should. Right. And obviously, salespeople, just like any employee, takes their cues from their manager. And if their manager doesn't place importance on it, then they don't place importance on it, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, yeah. So, what are some of the accelerators? Uh, we talked about the uh, the you know the bottlenecks or the speed bumps. So, what are some of the accelerators you can find or you can insert into your sales process? I'm so glad you asked that question because to me, the key area where people can accelerate that trust factor because people make decisions whether they're going to trust you in 18 to 22 seconds. Right. Uh, Amy Cuddy is one, a Harvard psychologist. She's the most watched uh, TED Talk, mm -hmm. and she talks about how people earn trust and how quickly it happens and what you can do. It is understanding the personality, the persona of the person you're selling to, you're talking to, and speaking to them in their language. We've all had experiences where we've gone into a store and had a salesperson come up to us and talk to us in a language that <laughs> doesn't resonate. And we want to, you know, turn around and find another salesperson or we leave the store or we go online and just just shut down, right? It just yep. turns you off. 
understanding how to talk to someone in their language when you can identify that within milliseconds based on body language, as well as you know, just one sentence of conversation can tell you whether they want to be spoken to um, it quickly, you know, whether you talk fast or you talk slow, right. whether they're warm or cool, whether they like a warm, fuzzy relationship or whether they want to keep arm's length. So understanding the different personas, what Rain Group has identified is six personas. Most other um, personality styles or types um, have identified four. Disc is you know, classic, the right. four elements. We have identified six because we believe people are a little bit more complex than just four, um, four for the size of a coin. So, yeah, for real. Yeah, so um, understanding the personas, how to identify them, and then how to sell to them, how to communicate to people in their language. I had a, a, an interesting experience happen to me years ago. I was moving, moved from the East Coast to San Francisco, I was leading a sales organization. I get introduced to my sales team. I start talking to them in New York talk, New York, <laughs> which is like, you know, in the New York minute. Yeah. And they're all from San Francisco and they're like earthy, crunchy, touchy, feely. You know, they're in a whole different, you know, pace, tone, cadence. They could not relate to me and I couldn't relate to them. <laughs> So it happens in a sales situation as well. You have to be able to identify their personality types and speak to people in their language. So it really requires us as salespeople to be chameleons. We have to adjust to the style, tone, cadence, speed, volume of the people that we're talking to and meeting with. And that obviously means that you have to be able to identify that very quickly, right? Exactly, yes. Yes. So, th so that requires, obviously, uh, you know, knowing the right questions to ask or how to ask them. But the listening is the huge part, right? It is always about the listening. Mm -hmm. You know, most salespeople focus on what they're going to say and how they're going to say it instead of how to be the perfect listener. Mm -hmm. And there's three steps to being the perfect listener. You ask permission to take notes. Mm -hmm. People like to feel like they're in control, so you want to ask for permission, and you're always going to get a yes, as long as you're asking the question in a way to get a yes. Mm -hmm. So that the first yes in the staircase to yes, if you will. So is it okay if I take notes while we're chatting? Yes. Not, do you mind if I take notes? Because then the answer is going to be no. <laughs> you want them to say yes. And then you want to take notes. Mm -hmm. And your retention increases 40% when you are listening and taking notes. And it also communicates to the person who's speaking um, an element of respect that their information is important to you, that you value um, the information that you're sharing. And then the third step is you summarize what you've heard. And you don't necessarily wait till the end. You summarize as you're going to make sure you're in sync, that you're consistent that you're um, hearing everything, that you're understanding everything that you're hearing. That's, and the yeah, that's great advice. Uh, and uh, especially, I mean, if you do ask permission to take notes, you better make sure you take some, right? Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> um, you could communicate the opposite very quickly if you ask to take notes and then don't take any. But those are great steps, the great advice is um, ask permission to take notes, take the notes and summarize as you go. Um, I like that last piece because a lot of people will naturally summarize at the end, right? So why is it so important to summarize as you go? Well, there's a number of reasons. Um, one is that you want to make sure that you're understanding what you're hearing. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it gives you tremendous benefits because oftentimes the client will say, yeah, you got it. And so you're on the same page and you're feeling, you know, you're in the zone and you're starting to like cruise along with them. Or they can may say, or they may say, you know, that's not exactly what I meant. Right. And so now we'll give you even more information or they'll say, you know, I gave you those three things that were important to me. You know, there's one I forgot. Right. And not, so you get more information. 
So you're validating as you go and making the uh, because obviously if you wait to the end, I mean, you could have missed a bunch of stuff, right? Or you could be off track completely. Yes, exactly. And you've taken notes, so you want to make sure that you, when you're summarizing at the end, you're hitting everything. But you want to do it as you go along, so that you're starting to guide the conversation because you're guiding the questions based on the validation that you're getting and the information you're receiving. Well, Judy, it's been a great conversation. We're bumping up against the end of our time here. I wanted to give you a couple of moments to tell the the viewers a little bit more about yourself, how they can find out more about you and contact you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I am located in California. I think you heard that. Um, as a consulting partner with the Rain Group, I enjoy working with uh, companies who are interested in transforming. We are all about transformation, transforming people, competencies, skills, and behaviors, as well as results. Uh, we are one of the top 20 sales training and consulting companies in the world, headquartered in Boston, and we base all of our programs on research data. We have very strong IP. Uh, we're constantly doing studies with buyers as well as sellers to understand what's working because how people buy today is totally different than how they bought just two years ago. Right. And we infuse that information into our articles and our blogs, but we also constantly refining our programs, our workshops, as well as our online programs to reflect how buyers are buying today. So we're arming our salespeople that we work with uh, so they can be most successful. Well, thanks, Judy. Uh, we've also had a number of your colleagues from the Rain Group who've contributed to Sales Pop as well. But I'd like to thank you for today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. I'll see you all again for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Great talking to you. So I encourage you to subscribe to salespop.net, the online sales magazine. Also subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment. Get involved in the conversation. Love to hear what you have to say.